I welcome you all to the lesson two of unit one, which is food chemistry. In today's session, we are going to look at the applications of carbohydrates in food processing industries, application of protein in food processing industries, application of fat in food processing industries, along with classification of vitamins, sources of vitamins, and the effect of processing on vitamins its deficiency problems also. With this, let's begin with application of carbohydrates in food processing industry. Carbohydrates are widely used as sweeteners. For example, sucrose, glucose, fructose. In various food products like beverages, baked goods, confectionaries and dairy products. Along with that, they act as thickeners and stabilizers. Carbohydrates such as starches, gums, Pectins are used as thickeners and stabilizers. They tend to improve the texture, viscosity and stability of sauces, soups and several bakery product, dairy products. They can be used as binding agents and bulking agents. For example, the starches present in the uh, food substances are used as binding agents like in for example, in the food products like sausages, burgers, meatballs, in order to prevent them from falling apart during cooking, they can be used, these carbohydrates can be used as bulking agents. Carbohydrates like maltodextrin, polydextrose are used as bulking agents to increase the volume and improve the mouthfeel. They can also be used as emulsifiers and texturizers. Carbohydrates like lecithin, mono and diglycerides are used as emulsifiers which will help in processing the food substances to stabilize the oil in water or water in oil emuls emulsions. They can be used as texturizers like modified starches and hydrocolloids are used as texturizers to mimic the texture of fat in low fat or fat free food products. Along with that they can be used as humectants and flavor enhancers. Carbohydrates can be used as pro prebiotics. So certain carbohydrates like inulin, oligosaccharides are used as prebiotics to promote the growth of beneficial gut microorganisms. They can be used as coatings and films. Carbohydrates like starches, cellulose, chitosan are used to enhance the shelf life, protect against moisture loss and improve the appearance of fruits, vegetables and other perishable food products. So these were some of the applications that were listed for carbohydrates in food processing industry. Now let us move on to applications of protein in food processing industry. It has several applications like proteins can be used as emulsifiers because they have emulsifying properties. They can be used as a forming agent because they have the property to create and stabilize forms by entrapping air or gas bubbles within a protein matrix. They can be used as for gelation, for solubility and dispersibility. They can be used, they, basically these uh, proteins, they have good water binding capacity or properties which will definitely help improve the moisture retention and juiciness of food products. Proteins, they also contribute to the textural properties of the food products. Therefore, it, uh, I mean the application of protein could be in texture modification of the foods also in food processing industries. It also, sorry now let us look upon the applications of fat in food processing industry. So the role and changes of plant lipids in processed foods like plant lipids they do have ability to increase the nutritional values of the foods. They also contain tocopherols, tocotrienols, which are major essential sources of vitamin E. So these lipids, 
they affect the functional properties of foods. For example, they help to retain carbon dioxide in duff, thus increasing the volume of the bakery products. Also, the most desirable influence of lipids is their effects on the odor and flavor of food products. So plant lipids being more unsaturated than animal lipids, they produce different flavor as a result of culinary operations. So flavors originating at roasting or frying temperatures are particularly appreciated. Not just that, these uh, fats could be used during frying of food substances. Frying oils and fats could be employed. They can be used as spreads, for example, butter and ghee. They can be used as baking fats, duff and shortening too. Now let us move on to next topic which is vitamins, its classification, sources of vitamins is what we are going to look at. So these vitamins are essential organic uh, compounds which are required by our body in very, very small amounts for various physiological functions. They can be broadly classified as fat soluble vitamins, water soluble vitamins. So if we talk about fat soluble vitamins, there are several examples or subcategories under it. Starting with vitamin A which is known as retinol and the sources of this retinol or vitamin A include liver, dairy products, carrots, sweet potatoes, spinach and kale. Along with that, there is one more fat soluble vitamin which is vitamin D which is also known as calciferol. So mainly it is synthesized by the skin through exposure to sunlight. You can also get it from certain dietary sources including fish, fatty fish like salmon, fortified dairy products and egg yolks. Vitamin E, it is known as tocopherol. So it is found in nuts, seeds, vegetable oils and green leafy vegetables. Talking about vitamin K which is another fat soluble vitamin which is known as phyloquinone, menad menadion. Sources include green leafy vegetables, vegetable oils and fermented foods. Now another classification of vitamins is water soluble vitamins. Different categories under water soluble vitamins are vitamin B1 which is known as thymine. It is found in whole grains legumes, nuts, pork and fortified foods. Vitamin B which is known as riboflavin sources include dairy products, lean meats, eggs, green leafy vegetables and fortified cereals. Vitamin B3 which is known as niacin which is found in meat, poultry, fish, whole grains, nuts and legumes. Vitamin B5 which is known as pentothenic acid. It is present in a wide variety of foods including meats, whole grains and vegetables. Vitamin B6 which is pyridoxin. It is found in meat, fish, poultry, nuts, bananas and fortified cereals. Vitamin B7 which is known as biotin. The sources include liver, egg yolk, nuts, seeds and certain vegetables. Vitamin B9 which is folic acid or folate. It is found in green leafy vegetables, legumes, seeds, nuts and fortified cereals. Another type of water soluble vitamin which is vitamin B12, cobalt milk, found in animal products such as meat, fish, poultry, eggs and dairy products. Vitamin C which is ascorbic acid, it is abundant in citrus fruits, strawberries, kiwi, bell peppers broccoli and tomatoes. Let us now understand effect of processing on vitamins and deficiency problems of vitamins. Let us first begin understanding the effect of processing on vitamins. So heat processing in, is one such processing which will definitely degrade the heat sensitive vitamins like vitamin C or vitamin B. However, some heat stable vitamins like vitamin A and vitamin E 
may be less affected by cooking. Let us understand about freezing. So freezing generally preserves the vitamin content of the foods better than other methods like canning, drying or even heating. But some loss may still occur over some time. Now canning and preservation. So high heat processing involved in canning would lead to the degradation of certain vitamins particularly vitamin C and vitamin B. However, these canned foods may still retain significant amount of other vitamins like vitamin A. Let us talk about drying and dehydration. Drying can cause significant loss of water soluble vitamins like vitamin C and some B vitamins. However, certain methods like freeze drying may better preserve vitamin content compared to the traditional drying methods. Also, fortification and, and enrichment will have effect of processing these processing techniques on vitamins. So, some processed foods which are fortified or, or enriched with vitamins to compensate for nutrient loss during processing. For example, fortification of flour with Folic acid will help prevent the neural tube defects. However, these fortification levels may not always compensate the complete loss or fully for losses. And some vitamins may not be effectively absorbed from the fortified foods. So, these are the references. This is the reference for the content that is being taught. You can go through it. And let us now look at the reflection spot, which in where you have to do some homework. So first one is list the applications of all these macronutrients, carbohydrates, proteins and fats in food industry, food processing industry. Also recall the effect of processing on vitamins and deficiency problems of vitamins. With this, we will end our today's session here. Thank you so much.